Hello and welcome to Path Made Easy. Today's case is an example of moderate epithelial dysplasia. So on screen we have some oral mucosa and obviously the epithelium is on the surface here with the lamina propria beneath that. So when we look at this epithelium, hopefully you can appreciate that the degree of keratin is increased. So there's an element of uh, hyperkeratosis here. But the area of interest is really um, the lower two thirds of the epithelium. So this kind of zone I'm delineating now, where we have quite proliferative bulbous reti pegs and if you look at this one in particular you can see it's wider at its base than towards the neck and this one here is quite wide or drop shaped and there's also a degree of budding which is quite a worrisome architectural feature so this reti peg pattern um, is concerning for dysplasia because of this bulbosity affecting the reti pegs and because of this budding architecture, they're architectural features of dysplasia. In terms of cytological features, when I zoom in, I can see that some of these nuclei are bigger than others. So there's a variation in nuclear size um, and these nuclei are taking up quite a large proportion of the cell, so we've got an increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. Now this particular case doesn't seem to have any mitoses, at least not in the field I'm looking at now, but that'd be another thing to look for. Um, so as well as the, the nuclear pleomorphism and increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, it does have these cells here, which I always say that they're kind of pinking up they're showing a degree of dyskeratosis. They haven't quite formed keratin yet, but I think you can see on low power that there's quite a few of these cells around and they also have quite a prominent nucleus. So there's a degree of dyskeratosis. When we traditionally grade dysplasia, we can do that in thirds where we look at the degree of change affecting the lower, the mid and the upper thirds of the epithelium. And hopefully you can agree that most of the changes I've pointed out are occurring in these lower two thirds. The upper third of the epithelium is relatively unaffected and that's why I would call this moderate epithelial dysplasia. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Path Made Easy. Thank you.